All right, we're going to look at the question of what end punctuation actually is. It pretty much only boils down to about three options. Uh, we're going to look at the kinds of sentences which require different kinds of punctuation. So we're going to look at declarative sentences, interrogative, exclamatory, imperative, and subjunctive. They all take different punctuation. Then we're going to look at the three main kinds of end punctuation in written English. We're going to look at how to use periods question marks and exclamation points. And we're going to end, as always, with a set of some practice. And you'll get to use your own end punctuation in some sample sentences. All right, what is end punctuation? End punctuation is the punctuation that appears at the end of a sentence. Duh. End punctuation contributes to the tone or the meaning of a sentence. Basically, end punctuation affects the way the sentence sounds in your head, which of course affects the way a piece of writing sounds in your head. Now, the three types of end punctuation for complete grammatical sentences in English, I'm not talking about fragments here, I'm not talking about, you know, funky punctuation that somebody just made up or stuff you find in comic books that who knows where they got it. Grammatical sentences, three punctuation marks. They are the period, the question mark, and the exclamation point, also called the exclamation mark. All right, now we're going to look at a few kinds of sentences because some of them use certain types of punctuation exclusively. For punctuation purposes, there are three kinds of sentences. Each has its own end punctuation. These three kinds are declarative, interrogative, and exclamatory. Now, I know I talked about a couple of others just a minute ago. We'll get to them, but they can, their punctuation can vary a little bit. So we're going to look at these three main kinds first. We're also going to talk about imperative sentences and subjunctive sentences, because although they don't have a single kind of punctuation, they're still important. All right. Declarative sentences. These are the kind of sentences you will use most in English. They are sentences that state a fact. So, for example, the sky is blue. Well, it was last time I checked. Andrew walked home yesterday. I'll take Andrew's word for it. I hate broccoli, but carrots taste pretty good. You are saying both of those things as facts. Now, bear in mind, carrots taste pretty good is an opinion, but the person who's stating the opinion is stating it as if it were a fact, so it is a declarative sentence. They are declaring carrots taste pretty good. All right, then we have interrogative sentences. Now, you might notice from the name, it kind of looks like the English word interrogate, which means to ask someone lots and lots of questions, possibly in an aggressive manner. Well, as a matter of fact, interrogative sentences are what you use to ask people questions. Interrogative sentences ask a question. That's what they're for. They may have an inverted subject verb order, so they may put the verb before the subject, unlike a normal declarative sentence in English. They may also be constructed just like declarative sentences with a question mark on the end. This means that the speaker isn't sure whether the statement is true and is asking for confirmation. Either they just can't believe what you just said, or they want to make sure they've got it right. Sometimes these sentences, these interrogative sentences, are just one word long. So, for example, we had the sky is blue for the declarative sentence, and here we have is the sky blue. Now we have the subject, the sky, and the verb, is, and they're in the opposite order of what you would normally expect in English because it's an interrogative sentence. You're asking a question. Andrew walked home yesterday? Now again, someone might say that if they're not sure, you know, they don't really believe what you just said. Someone says, Andrew walked home yesterday, and somebody goes, Andrew walked home yesterday? Maybe Andrew doesn't like to walk. Maybe there was a blizzard yesterday. For whatever reason, we don't really believe that Andrew walked home yesterday, so we're asking a question. Or the ever-popular, what? One word long, perfectly good interrogative sentence, and you'll notice they all end with a question mark. All right, exclamatory sentences. These are some of my favorites because they go boom! Exclamatory sentences express strong emotion. They may be constructed like declarative sentences or they may be grammatically incomplete. They also may be just one word long. So, the sky is blue, woo! Blue is my favorite color, I love the sky being blue. Or, wow, five tons of mackerel. That's a lot of fish, I'm impressed, so I'm exclaiming about it. Or, the ever popular, ouch! Okay, you're loud about it, you're in pain, ouch! So you use the exclamation point at the end. All right, imperative sentences. Now, 
Punctuation can vary a bit on these, but you need to know about them. Imperative sentences give a command or an instruction. They have no grammatical subject in the sentence. It is implied that the subject is an unspoken you. So, for example, hand me that pen. I'm instructing you to hand me a pen. Who's doing the handing? You are. You is the subject. Hand is the verb. It's an imperative sentence, and you'll notice it ends with a period. You may also say, please pass the salt. Again, you're being polite, you're speaking in a measured tone. It ends with a period. Or, imperative sentences can be louder. They can be more forceful, more emotional. Put that cat down! Uh, so, obviously, someone feels very strongly that you should put the cat down, and so it ends with an exclamation point. All right, subjunctive sentences. Now, we have an entire lesson on the subjunctive mood in the basic grammar course, so if you're confused on subjunctives, go watch it. Uh, but we're going to go over it briefly here. Subjunctive sentences are a special class of sentence that describes events that are contrary to fact, such as requests or hypothetical situations. Uh, if you want to know more about this, like I said, go look at the basic grammar lesson on the subjunctive mood. But for two examples, we could say, if I were your mother, I would disown you. That's in the subjunctive mood. It's talking about a hypothetical situation. I can absolutely guarantee that whoever you are watching this video, I am not your mother. Uh, you may also say, I ask that you go home now. Now, the subjunctive usually ends with a period, but sometimes if you're really emphatic about it, an exclamation point is involved. If I were your mother, I would disown you. You could be very loud about it, and then suddenly you need an exclamation point. So let's look at the actual punctuation. What is a period? Just in case you don't know, a period is a dot at the level of the line at the end of a sentence. You see this period right here? It's on the same level as the line on which the words rest. It's a little dot on that level. That's all a period is. It is used for declarative sentences and some imperative and subjunctive sentences. The sky is blue. Please pass the salt. If I were your mother, I would disown you. All right, question marks. A question mark is a hook-shaped mark above a period. It is used only, 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 only at the end of interrogative sentences and fragments, including sentences that are half question, which we'll look at in a minute. When you see a question mark, this is important, it means that the sentence should be spoken with a rising inflection at the end. So listen to my voice as I read these sentences. Is the sky blue? You hear how my voice went up on blue? That means there's a question mark. There's that little hook-shaped mark, and it's an interrogative sentence. I'm not sure of the answer, so I'm asking you, is the sky blue? You hate broccoli, don't you? Now, this is a sentence that's half question. You hate broccoli is a declarative statement. Don't you? Question. It ends with a question, so you end with a question mark. Andrew walked home yesterday? Really? Andrew? Andrew doesn't like to walk home. So we have the question mark. And what? Again, my voice goes up. What? So you have the question mark. All right. Exclamation points. An exclamation point is a vertical line above, but not touching, a period. It is used at the end of exclamatory sentences, and sometimes at the end of subjunctive and imperative for emphasis. But basically, if you stick an exclamation point on the end, you can always claim it's an exclamatory sentence just because it's got an exclamation point. So, the sky is blue! Hooray! Ouch! If I were your mother, I would disown you! Or, put that cat down! Man, whatever, that, whatever is wrong with that cat, I really want you to put it down, apparently. And they all end with an exclamation point, and they all should ideally be said as if you're just a little bit exploding. All right, so let's do a little practice with all of this. Take a look at these sentences and see if you can figure out what kind of end punctuation they need. Matthew is a celebrated attorney. Do you like Chinese food? Leave the package if no one answers the door. Stop right there. Amelia reads three new books every month. This cake is great, isn't it? My favorite movie is Casablanca. Are you joking? And this is the best birthday I've ever had. Take a good long look, pause the video if you need to, and see if you can figure out what punctuation belongs at the end of each of these sentences. All right, let's take a look. Matthew is a celebrated attorney. That's a declarative sentence, so it ends with a period. It's a statement of fact. Matthew is an attorney, and he's apparently very good at it. Do you like Chinese food? Now, my voice when I read that sentence was a little bit of a clue that it was a question. Also, the fact that the subject and verb order were flipped. 
do is part of the verb and you is the subject. So that tells you we're asking a question. It's an interrogative sentence, so it must end with a question mark. Leave the package if no one answers the door. Again, simple statement, ends with a period. Stop right there. Now, if you put a period for stop right there, that's totally fine. You can say stop right there and, you know, you're not shouting it. But in this case, usually if you want someone to stop right away, you probably are going to be shouting it at them because, for example, if they don't stop, they're going to walk over a cliff. So stop right there gets an exclamation point. Amelia reads three new books every month. That's a declarative sentence, so it ends with a period. This cake is great, isn't it? That isn't it is a question, so it ends with a question mark. My favorite movie is Casablanca, statement of fact, so it ends with a period. Are you joking? Once again, we have that inverted subject verb order, and so it's a question and it ends with a question mark. Again, my voice when I read it, are you joking? You hear it go up, that's a question. This is the best birthday I've ever had. Now again, you could use a period instead of an exclamation point, but frankly, if you're having the best birthday you've ever had in your life, you're probably pretty happy about it, and you're probably a little bit exclamatory. This is the best birthday I've ever had. So now you see how it's done. And that's all for this lesson. Thank you for watching Educator.com.